already know who's going down and we already know who are the champions out of the Premier League. But of course, it's all about the race for the top four. Liverpool's goalkeeper, Alisson, has kept them in the mix. But who will get the top four spots? We'll take a look next. Game of the production show today. We're taking a look at match number 37, aka the penultimate match day over the Premier League. And we'll get to that in just one second. If you're new to the channel, where the heck have you been, boys? Smash your subscribe and keep hanging out telling me all things Batman Rose late, Premier League related, World Football related. We're going to know here. Under one Ruski, that's right, of course, Liverpool, lastminute.com with Alisson, the goalkeeper, coming up for a Bobby Dazzler to keep them in the hunt for the race for the top four. When, of course, all hopes look lost way back uh, at around about January, February time, of course. But now things are all in there. Well, not in their hands just yet. But, of course, they've got a humongous chance to get into that top four at the expense of Leicester or Chelsea, depending on what goes on this week. We'll take a look at that in a minute, of course. A big big shout out to the VIPs. They are the Patreons. Thank you for your continued support behind the scenes. I do appreciate it, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, but anyway, let's get cracking. Of course, we are taking a look at the uh, the penultimate match day. But before all that, we're going to bring you back uh, to the results that did take place last week. I might have to make myself a little bit smaller here. Um, I've got something stuck in my mouth. But, uh, ooh, I don't know what that is, but it hurts. Anyway, we're going to try and plough on. Here we go. So take a look at the games that did take place in the past week. I am a bit big, aren't I? That's what she said. I've got to move myself down a smidgen down here always. I'm a bit too mo bohemoth. There we go. How about that? I think that's because I did a couple of special videos the other day. Uh, maybe a little bit more, eh? Let me, I'm still too big. That's what she said. There she goes. Right there. Okay, so we're going to kick it all off. Bay back man to the nil-nil draw down at Villa Park between Aston Villa and Everton. I actually remember the two one win myself for Villa, but unfortunately I was wrong. It looks like Everton are, of course, out of the race. So the, they've had a bit of a nightmare week here, really. Uh, getting the one point there, but of course it uh, went even worse early, further on in the week. Next up, it was Manchester United up against Liverpool down at Old Trafford. You, these games are usually a bit of a damp squib, really, but this one was a Bobby Dazzler. It'll be a 4-2 win in favour of Liverpool in a bloody goal fest. Uh, goes from Jota, uh, Firmino with a brace, uh, Mo Salah as well, Bruno Fernandes and Marcus Rashford getting the goals for United, but they lost. They got found out. Liverpool looked very, very good that day uh, to get the three points and, of course, move uh, within touching distance of those top four spots. Uh, meanwhile, another game, a goal fest, uh, was at uh, uh, St. James's Park as Newcastle. Uh, lost the seven-goal throw to Manchester City. That's right, goals from Emil Kraft, Joe Linton and Joseph Willis uh, giving uh, Newcastle United some hope. But Ferdinand Torres with a hat-trick and Joel Cancelio getting the goals for Manchester City as they made sure of the points in the end. 4-3 in the favour to them. Uh, and again, of course, champions uh, partying like it's 99 -5. Another goal first down at the third. More, of course, Burnley are back. Premier League next season. 4-0 loss, though, to Leeds United. Really turned on the star. Klitsch, Harrison Rodrigo with a double. Quick-fire double as well. He could have had more than that as well. Uh, so big win for Leeds. Uh, Burnley, unfortunately, looks shit. Uh, hopefully they're shit next season. Uh, Southampton against Fulham. I think another goal first on this one. Four goals here as well. Uh, Southampton's goal was coming from Che Adams, Nathan uh, Teller, uh, Theo Walcott as well with Fabio Cavellio getting the goal for Fulham, but again, they are going down. Uh, Brighton against West Ham could probably killed any hopes of West Ham's top four dreams. Uh, Danny Welbeck on the score for Brighton, late uh, before Saeed Ben Rama equalised, also very, very late as well in a 1-1 draw. Meanwhile, Palace against uh, Aston Villa, 3-2 win in the goal fest there. Christian Benteke, Wilfred Zaha and Tarek Mitchell with the winner, uh, John McGinn and El uh, Anwar El Ghazi getting the goal for Aston Villa in a 3-2 win though for Palace. Spurs are two new winners as well over Wolves. Got that one bang on the nose. Harry Kane and Pierre Emich, Emich Holzberg on the score sheet giving, uh, giving uh, the Spurs the win uh, at uh, their fancy pants new stadium. And West Brom did uh, make, uh, give it a little bit of problems to Liverpool, but it was all about Alisson in the end. Uh, Howard Robson kind of opened up on the scoring on the 15th minute before Salah equalised the 33rd minute before 95th minute winner from the goalkeeper. Alisson from the corner. Bang old head. No one was a touch. And of course, a bit of a surprise here. Uh, yes, yeah, Sheffield United did beat Everton 1-0 on the night. Daniel Daniel Jebson, don't even know who he is, young gun maybe. And of course the FA Cup, this is a Brucey bonus point uh, in favour of Leicester with Tillman's banger on Saturday, of course. So yes, a lot of goals, a lot of goals. But of course we're going to the penultimate game now. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Of course, let's take a look at your picks then, shall we? Here we go. Let's take a look at your guys. Legolas good, did pretty poop. Iron Shing also did very, very well. Iron Kumar, not too bad either. Mark Chapman also did bits. Uh, Yannick Zyfried also did shite. Oh, Maskeville also did very, very well. Well done to you, of course. Patron, much love to you, of course. Oh no, oh, what am I saying? Alex Weller did, uh, okay. 
Hey, uh, Yoki Blackson also did very, very well indeed. Hey, Judy did bits. Uh, the side leader of WHFC also did okay. Yeah, for EMP, not too bad either. Ultra Mirror, well done to you as well. Uh, kicking off for hands, worse, not too shabby. Ultra 52 also did bits. Lee 21 also did okay. Ricardo W also did poop. Uh, Roberto Hoss, not too bad either. Ackman Sachs also did very, very well as well. Aston Villa 7 b did bits. Uh, Ryan C, not too bad. He did poop, actually. Imagine Monday also did bits. Uh, Aston Villa Seal did shite. Uh, Nanny Game also did okay. And uh, Edwin Rush did with the coolest name in town. Also did very, very well as well. Give me did poop. Harrison Crane did okay. Okay, did okay. And I said, I do did all right. He pooped ski. Easily and no one. Oh, did oh poo. Okay. Oh, I thought you had the best last of the bits. Barcelona also did good. Of course, Costas K, he's okay. James B. C. Oh, great. You did okay. Shane Donald, well done to you, my brother. Of course, uh, well done. And of course, uh, Kodiko also did bits. And uh, song did okay. Uh, AJ24, not too shabby. Fau Sayade, not too bad. And Tom Stainer also did very, very well as well. A big love to the patrons indeed. Of course, I have got a Discord, guys. Make sure you check that badger out. There's links uh, at the start and the end of the video also in the content in the description down below but anyway oh magic monday with a seven well done to you jockey Jackson with a six of course in the chasing pack as well what's that done to the overall table heading into uh with only 20 points guys i think left on the uh offering is the alpha vmpp who has it uh costas k still in the mix oh magic monday vincent hong hands worst probably in your, your your top five race there maybe legolas good with a stretch he needs a snookers really i think it's it's there is 20 points on the offering so in theory anyone all the way down to uh, maybe 30 13th place, uh, maybe 12th place uh, are in it, but you're going to have to need some miraculous nightmare scenarios at the top end here for uh, for you guys to be, be realistically in it. I would say maybe hands worst and up, have a shot, six points adrift, you need to be getting high eights and hopefully they get like maybe fives and then you never know, you, you just don't know. And let's take a look at, uh, of course, what will happen next time around, of course, uh, in just one second, that's the table right here right now, I believe. Yes, it is. Manchester City lead the charge, of course, they are champions and they'll be, they'll be uh, parting uh, uh, all, right, all through the season, of course, they've got a small matter of the Champions League to, to think about as well. United are second, and I think they cannot be they cannot fall out of the Champions League spots. Uh, Leicester City, of course, uh, are parting now for the FA Cup victory, but of course they take out Chelsea this week in a in a in a top four defining game, I think, and then Liverpool breathing down the necks as well. So it is very very tight uh, for that. Sheffield United, West Brom, and Fulham are down. They are gone. They are in Championship next season. Uh, but anyway, let's take a look at the next round of matches. Then shall we? Of course, kicking all off with Manchester United up against uh, Fulham. Let's get into this and then show of course pleasure the last six five wins for United let's have a follow on one draw last round at Old Trafford was a 4-1 win uh, for Manchester United of course goals come from Ashley Young uh, Juan Mata Romelu Lukaku and Rashford as well with Abeluma Kamara on the as well for, for Fulham uh, Zambo and Guiza got himself sent off back in the day they also played each other this season at Cream Cottage it was two women for United uh, United though have actually won 12 of the last 13 home matches against Fulham and Old Comps as Fulham have actually failed to win uh, 33 of the last 37 away matches heading into this of course Fulham win it uh, four, four five wins Five defeats, sorry, five defeats in the past six games. Of course, the only positive was a draw against Arsenal. As for United, three defeats in the past four. The only positive was a win against Villa. Of course, losing to the likes of Roma, uh, Leicester, and of course, Liverpool in quick succession. A look at the bookies' odds on this one. We have United 3 to 1 on for the extra 17 to 4. Is your draw 52? Is your Fulham? Uh, of course, Fulham all the way down in the relegation spots. They cannot get up, but of course, they could, uh, with of course everything else going against them this week, they could end up in 19th. As for United, they're in second. And of course, uh, they will be second no matter what at the end of this one. Going to go with a cheeky 3 to win. For Manchester United. They said, of course, Southampton taking, of course, Leeds United. A bit of a banger, this one. Pledge of the last six, three wins apiece, and no draws. Last time around at St. Mary's was a 3 1 win for Southampton back in the Championship in August 2011. Wow, wow, wee wow. Uh, of course, Dean Hammond on the score sheet, Adam Lallana, David Connolly getting the goals for the Saints as well. Max, uh, Max Allen Gradle on the score sheet for Leeds as well, giving them uh, a consolation goal. They also pledge of this is at Ellen Rose, a 3 0 win for Leeds. Uh, Southampton, though, winning five of the last six home matches against Leeds in all competitions heading into this. Uh, back to back wins as well for the Saints, and back to back three. 3-1 wins as well, beating Crystal Palace and Fulham, but both of those games were at home. Also, this game is at home as well. Uh, Leeds coming to this just one defeat the last six one defeat was against Brighton on the road uh, of course so yeah Leeds in pretty good form as well of course the bookies odds on this one 7-5 for Leeds 17-10 is your Saints 11-4 is your draw the South Fampton boys are in 14th right now win for them they can move up to 12th Leeds are in 10th and a win for them they can move up as high as 8th what a, what an end to the season that would be 1-1 uh, draw though on this one a bit of a damp squib I think in the end Brighton up against Manchester City of course uh, the champions uh, are in waiting or they are the champions it is confirmed uh, the picture of the last six of course six wins uh, six four, uh, uh, Manchester. City, including a 5 0 win last time around at the Amex back in July 2020 in lockdown. Sterling, of course, with a hat trick. Gabriel Jesus and Bernardo Silva also on the score sheet as well for City as well. They also appreciate this is at, of course, Manchester Way. There's one away for Manchester back in Jan. Manchester City, they're winning 21 of the last 24 matches in the Premier League. Uh, they've also won the last eight matches against Brighton in all competitions. 
They come into this winning five of the past six games. The only hiccup was a defeat to Chelsea in the Premier League. As for Brighton, just one win in the past six games. That one was against Leeds as well. Uh, there'll be fans, I think, back in most of these games. We'll have a little look about that. We'll talk about that later. Of course, uh, the bookies are 32 for Brighton. 29 on is your, your Man City. 23 is your draw. Brighton all the way down into 17th right now, but they are safe as ours. There's a win for them, though. They can move up to 15th. Of course, City are top of the beat no matter what. Going to go with a 3-1 win for City to keep on keeping on. Next up, of the big one is Chelsea against Leicester. Who will get uh, the three pointers? Who will be in the driving seat? Heading into the final match day, of course. Those are the last six. One win for Chelsea, two for Leicester, three draws, of course. Last round at uh, at Chelsea. Stamford Bridge was back in uh, 2019. It was in August. It was a draw. Uh, goals coming from Wilfred Nindindi and Mason Mountain. Score sheet for Ch Chelsea, of course, in a 1 1 draw. They also pitched uh, this season at the King Palace, a 2 win for, for Leicester back in January, of course. Leicester also beat them in the FA Cup just the other day. Uh, in fact, just yesterday or the day before. Uh, Leicester, though, undefeated in 12 of the last 13 matches on the road. They come into this uh, Leicester winning four of the past six. Only hiccup really was a draw again. Uh, was a defeat against Newcastle. However, back to back feats uh, for Chelsea, losing to Arsenal and losing to Leicester as well. Back to back games without a goal. In fact, uh, no, that's, that's that's it. I can't. There's no in fact there. Uh, of course, look at the bookies' odds on this one. We have Chelsea ten to seven on the eye. Your favourites four to one is your Leicester. Eleven to four is your draw. Uh, Leicester are actually in third right now. With them, they, they will be home and host. I think for a Champions League spot next season. Win, and I believe they are in. Uh, Chelsea, though, of course, are fourth. And with them, they could go above Leicester and put them in a bit of trouble. Of course, with Liverpool breathing down their necks as well. Uh, tight one. This one going to go with Chelsea though to nick it with a five goal thriller. I hope. Hope for it is a Bobby Dazzler just like that. Uh, next up, of course, we have Everton up against uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers. Of course. Place of the last six. It's been two wins apiece and two draws. Last round, of course, at Everton or Goodison was a 3 2 win for Everton back in September 2019. Rick Carlson will be on the score sheet. Rick Carlson got braced that day. Roman Sace and Raul uh, Jimenez on the score sheet with the Wolves. And Willie Bolly got himself sent off back in the day. They also pleasure this is Amolini. It was a 2 win for Everton back in Jan. Um, heading into this, Everton failing to win 10 last 11 home matches in the Premier League. That's pretty well for form. Just one win and four for them. Uh, one win against West Ham. Meanwhile, just uh, one win and four also for Wolves. That was against Brighton as well. Two teams in that kind of hokey-cokey kind of form, really. A look at the bookies' odds on this one. Taking place on Wednesday. It'll be 2017 on uh, for your Everton. 60-5 is your Wolves. 13-5 is your draw. Uh, Wolves all the way down in uh, 12th right now. Went for them. They could close in on 11th. Everton are in 8th. And went for them. They can mathematically jump to 6th and get themselves back in the Europa hunt, of course. Going to go with Everton on this one against the form. They've not been playing well recently, but I think they're going to get the 2 0 win to give them the three points and then move on. Next up, we've got Newcastle United against Sheffield United. Big win for Sheffield United the other day. But, of course, it, it matters little. Uh, the, the, the play to the last six four for the Geordies, one win for the Blades, one win, one draw, of course. Last round at St. James's Park was in the Prem back in June 2020. Three to win for Newcastle. St. Maximum on the score sheet, Matt Ritchie and Joe Linton on the score sheet. John Egan got himself sent off. They also played each other at Bramall Lane back in Jan. It was a one to win for Sheffield United. Uh, Newcastle have conceded at least two goals in eight of the last ten matches at home heading into this. They come into this just one win of four. Newcastle, that was against Leicester. Meanwhile, two wins in the past four games for Sheffield United. The best bit of form all season, beating the likes of, of course, Brighton and Everton. Uh, this one on the road. A look at the bookies' odds on this one. We have Newcastle 10 7 on for the victory. 29 to 10 is your 50 to 4 is your Sheffield United. Sheffield United are, are down. Uh, but for them, they could mathematically still finish in 19th if they get a bit of a luck and a bit of a goal swing. They need to win this one. As for the Geordies in 16th, a win for them, they can move up to 15th and maybe even push uh, for a strong end to the season. Going to go with a 2 0 win for the Geordies on this one. Sheffield United have been shite. Uh, Spurs are up against Aston Villa. Let's get a look at this one then. Shall we play the last six? Six minutes at six for Spurs. Uh, nothing for Villa, of course. Last time around at Tottenham's Fancy Ben Stadium was a 3 1 win for Spurs back in August 2019. Tangate in Dumbledore. On the with Harry Kane with a brace. Uh, John McGinn getting a goal for Villa also back in the day. They also played each other this season at Villa Park as a 2 win for Spurs. Spurs, though, have actually won the last six matches against Villa in all comps. We talked about that. They also scored at least two goals in the last six matches against Villa in all competitions as well. Uh, Spurs also come into this winning six of the seven home matches, of course, but they come into this just two, two wins in the past four games, beating uh, uh, Sheffield United and, of course, beating uh, Wolves as well. As for Aston Villa, just one win of six of them. That one was against Everton. Uh, a bit hokey cokey in a form for Aston Villa at the moment. A look at the bookies' odds on this one. We have Spurs coming at you. 2-1 on for the Richie 7-2 is your 5-1 is your long shot. That's Aston Villa. Aston Villa in ninth. Sorry, scrap that 11th there and a win for them. They could move closer to the 10th. Spurs are 6 and mathematically uh, they still have an outside sniff uh, for the top four. They need to win. They need a bit of snookers, really. Um, uh, but realistically, I think the race for fifth is what they're looking at here, and that's four points adrift at the moment. Uh, so we'll see about that. Going to go with a 3 0 for Spurs. They ain't getting Champions League, realistically, even with that win. Uh, Palace up against Arsenal, then, shall we take a look at this, then, shall we? Let's get into it. Uh, of course, last six, uh, one win apiece, four draws, of course, last round at Selhurst Park was a 1 1 draw back in January 2020. Goals coming from uh, Jordan Ayew and Pierre Emerick Babiang on the score. She also got himself sent off on the same match. Uh, also, heading into this, 
this. What are we looking at? This uh, they played each other this season at, at, at uh, the uh, the Emirates as a nil nil draw back in Jan. Uh, Palace though have actually drawn the last three matches against Arsenal in all competitions. Arsenal keep it clean sheet in the last three on the road. They've also won the last three on the road as well heading into this. They're actually winning three of the past four. I'm beating the last four. Uh, Palace were, uh, picking up two wins in the past three games. The only hiccup was a defeat to Southampton. Of course, look at the bookies odds on this one. What do we have on this? We have Arsenal coming at you uh, two to one for the Richie. Six to one is uh, two to one on. Sorry, six to one is your Crystal Palace. Sixty to five is your draw. Palace all the way down in thirteenth right now. Win for them. They can move up to twelfth. Uh, Arsenal are in ninth. The win for them. They can move up to eighth. Indeed. I'm going to go with Arsenal on the road. 2-1 win. Of course, uh, Palace are safe and they look good, but uh, I think Arsenal will nick it. Uh, Burnley up against Liverpool. Of course, big game this one, of course, for Liverpool's t uh, title hopes. Or not title hopes, but top four hopes. Uh, but the last six, of course, one for Burnley, four for Liverpool and one draw last round at Turmoil. So, 3-0 win for Liverpool. That was back in, of course, uh, August 2019. Uh, Chris Wood with a big for OG, Sadio Mane and Roberto Firmino on the score sheet as well. They also played each other this season at Anfield. So, 1-0 win for Burnley back in Jan as well. I suppose the, the, the matches were really bad. Uh, it was eight 83rd minute winner for, for Bernie with Ashley Barnes, the Austrian on the score sheet. Liverpool, though, winning five of the last six away matches heading into this. Uh, they've also won five of the last six away matches against Burnley in all competitions. Burnley, though, have actually lost the last three home matches heading into this. Uh, Liverpool, yeah, unbeat the last six, picking up three wins on the spin. Um, of course, a last minute.com winner against West Brom. Two, uh, two wins in the past four games for Burnley. However, uh, yeah, the past two home games have been defeats as well. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how all that pans out. Look at the bookies' odds on this one. What do we have on this? We have, of course, Burnley 10 to 1 for the victory, 92 on is your Liverpool, 11 to 2 is your draw. Uh, of course, Burnley all the way down into uh, 15th right now. Win for them, they could close in on 14th. As for Liverpool, they are fifth. Win for them, they could actually go fourth, depending on what goes on with the Chelsea game against Leicester City. Got a 2 to win for Burnley on this one. Uh, yes, indeed. In fact, I'm just looking at the goal difference here. The goal difference between themselves and Leicester is. Is very, very slim. And a win for Liverpool and a defeat for Leicester would actually see Liverpool go into the top four as well. So, no matter what goes on, unless it's... Uh, uh, I, I, Liverpool, if they win this game, they should be in the top four. Um, so, 2 to win for me. So, I believe they're in. Like Flint. Next, of course, West Brom. Or should I say, finally, it's West Brom against West Ham. This time around, of course, at uh, the Hawthorns. was back in September 2017. It was a nil-nil draw. However, that time around this season was, of course, uh, at West Ham Stadium. The London Stadium was a 2-1 win for West Ham back in January, of course. Uh, heading into this, West Brom have failed to win the last five matches in the Premier League. They come into this looking very, very wobbly. As for West Ham, just one win of five as well, which has derailed their Champions League hopes as well. Look at the bookies' odds on this one. We have West Brom, 17-4 for the victory. 5-3 on is your West Ham, 16-5. Is your draw, of course, West Ham. West Brom are down. A win for them, though. They could finish in 18th. As for West Ham, they are seventh right now. But a win for them, they can move up to, up to sixth. And maybe making a late push for that fifth spot, depending on what goes on with Burnley and Liverpool. I'm going to go with a, a draw on this one. Not really, not really exciting into the season for West and West Ham. It's down there, boys. You can see it. I know you've been bitching and moaning about where my head is, but that's it, my friends. That's it. Be sure to give the video a love and smash your thumbs up, smash your subscribe, check the links down below. Of course, I'm on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, and of course, the Discord is wide open. Go check it all out. It's free to enter. It's a place to hang out and chat and stuff like that. And if you want to go with that extra punch, you become the latest member of the Patreon gang. Check that out as well. Patreon.com forward slash Rover Seas. But again, we're coming to the final day of the season. We'll probably be back either Wednesday night, late, or, or Thursday morning for the final game of the season. But who, of course, will get the Champions League football spots? And we'll find out, of course, very, very soon. But until then, I'm out. <laughs>